Florida. Small craft advisory, wind blowing so good that it's 14 foot seas up to 60 miles offshore. Not that I'm ever going there, but what do you do on days like today? Well, I'll show you what I do. I get brand new equipment and I'm going to share it with you. Here it is, folks. And the funny thing is, it's just a happenstance. I got these reels, and the seller is in Marysville, Washington. That's where Pacific Skiff, Pacific Boats, that's the same town as the people who built my boat are in. What a happenstance. This was two of what I just got today. And at the end, I am going to tell you a really cool story that has something to do with these. Let's open it up here with the old Andrew Demko Cold Steel AD-10. Yeah, i got to throw a plug in there every once in a while for knives because you all let me know, all my subscribers and usual viewers, you certainly did let me know to never, ever do anything about a knife ever again. What do you see there? TR-100G. Four more. The absolute most bulletproof reel that I've ever owned. Well, this makes, I don't even know how many I have. The TR-100G by Shimano. I have multitudes of videos about these reels. What I want you to do is stick with me and I am going to tell you a story about these reels. They're a level wine star drag. I've got these so old that this is metal and this is metal back in the day when they made these with more metal on them. That reel right there is so absolutely workhorse bulletproof. I don't care what any reel has. If I was on a deserted island or my boat was sinking and I see a deserted island off in the distance, one thing I would do is I would grab these reels on rods and throw them in a cooler and swim that cooler all the way over to that deserted island because this reel does not mess up at all. And I'm telling you, I got all the proof in the world. Bull reds, sharks, king mackerels, everything can be caught on these. I'm putting them on a medium light seven foot striper rod. Ugly stick striper. When I get these brand new reels, what am I going to do first? Well, there is the Calcutta handle that I usually have on all of these reels. And here's a little baby handle that comes with them. Now remember that handle for the end of the video. This is what I put on. This handle, I just buy them straight from Shimano. 
And what I want to do is I want to take the power handle and put it on the brand new reels because the brand new reels will be going on a Tiger jigging rod that I use for pretty much heavy duty bottom fishing. And then the older one, which is the one that I've been using, will get the smaller handle and will go on the medium light ugly stick striper rod, if that makes any sense. I want the newer reels moved up into more HD uh, usage. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this handle off and another thing that I end up doing is while I'm in here I am going to super lube the brand new reels. I call it getting them charter ready. See that little tiny brass bushing? That goes right here on the handle side of the spool. There's no bearings to mess up. Everybody thinks bearings, 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 bearings. Well, let me tell you something. Bearings isn't the end all. It isn't the always the greatest thing in the world. That bearing, well, ball bearings is what everybody thinks is the end all. But that bronze bearing right there does the job on these reels. It's the KISS system. Keep it simple, stupid. Well, the KISS system is what keeps these reels working all of the time. I go in here and when I charterize a reel, even if it's brand new, I am going to put extra lube all over it because these things get road hard and put up wet. These reels just keep working and working and working. And yeah, you may want something super fancy. Sure, I've got $500 reels. I got ones that I've had to buy right now all over again would be 600 something dollars. But remember, if I was going to that deserted island, what would I choose? Probably the Shimano TR100G or 200G. The 200G is just a little wider of a reel with a wider spool. That's all it is. And everybody thinks they need them. Really? Well, if stay to the end of this video, and I'll tell you why you, you might need it if you were in this man's position. Everybody, all the cat fishermen and all them dudes think they need something with that kind of line capacity as the 200 has. These are the 100s, and the line capacity on these is 4.3 to 1 gear ratio. Line capacity, 390 yards of 12-pound mono. Okay, I'm using 30-pound braid, so that would probably be about a 10-pound. So these will probably hold 400, 400 yards, and then you think you need more than that to catch a catfish? I don't think so. I have never, in anything that we've ever caught, be it sharks, hooked in the tarpon, whatever, have needed more line capacity than these hold. What I'm saying is, and this video is based on, is reels that I use in my charter fishing business for the last 23 years for my customers. Reels that work, reels that are durable for my liking. Durable in salt water, no corrosion, corrosion resistance, having no buttons sticking like on a Garcia Ambassador. I've gone through every Garcia Ambassador in the world and had the button and the thumb bar and all that stuff sticking. But for general purpose, day in, day out, these Shimano's, I mean, these don't have any paint them off. It's just a wonderful reel that holds a lot of line. That is your general purpose saltwater reel. These are Timex watches. Timex, a Timex watch, the old saying was, takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Well, physically takes a licking, 
thing keeps on ticking. Now, if you're going to tell me about some other reel, that's fine. I know all about the pen warfares and the pen this and the this and that and the... I asked a guy about the Bass Pro Shop reels and I know all that. I mean, I am a major tackle junkie, folks. So I know about all these other reels. I know what the interweb is all about. Kind of like when I bought my boat or had my boat built. People said, how the heck did you ever find that boat? Why did you have that one done? Why did you get that one? Where did you find it? The internet? You ever hear that thing that Al Gore invented? That thing called the internet? I, like I said, I've gone through everything. I've gone through all the Garcia ambassadors, up to 7,000. I had twin drag accurates at one time. But I had about 12 twin drag accurates. And what I found is that was over gunning 99% of the fish that I'm probably catching. Wonderful reels. Wonderful. All I needed was something that was super durable with a level wine. Now, if accurate made a level wine, I'd be all in. I've had avets up to like this. Avet 50 two speeds. So I know all about reels. Let me let me restate that. I've either looked at them, held them, used them, or owned them for a good long time. A lot of different Shimano's. I went through all the low profiles, the Daiwa Lexus. I had, and I still have that video out there, and I didn't need it. It turned out I didn't need it. It was sort of a novelty, but I liked it. I had the 500 size Tranex. It was the biggest low profile reel known to man. Awesome reel. I got jigging master level winds, level wind lever drags. So it's not like I don't know about what reel works and what. Here's one of the things that I love about using name brand. And I don't think you can do this if you buy a reel out of Cabela's or something like that. I'm not really sure because that's one of the ones that I really have never... I have had a couple Cabela's reels, and they were Daiwa's. They were really just Daiwa's. But that was way back in the old days. Is If I need a part for these, and I've got an entire drawer full of parts, I've got caps for the paw. I've got paws. I've got a reel that is nothing but a sacrificial reel for gears and parts. It's just a parts reel. The one thing I love is I can go to shimanofishing.com and I can order parts. Order parts. You know, if they're back ordered, I had a, one of the parts guy one time, I said, oh, I really needed those. He says, oh, well, they won't be in until next week. So when they get here, um, I'll hurry up and get them out to you. Don't worry about shipping. I'll just send them to you. No, free shipping on us. Don't worry about it. I was like, cool. Okay. I got an email saying, your Shimano parts are on the way. That's the type of thing that I need in my business. I want to be able to, when something breaks, I go right onto the Daiwa parts list. Boom, right on Shimano parts list. That's where I get these handles. But... I don't throw lures with these, okay? See that emblem right there? That's the little Triton emblem. That's uh, King Neptune. King Neptune or something with his Triton, his three-pronged three spear. I've had customers using this. That little emblem has fallen off during the day. I stick it in my pocket. And when I get home, since it's just glued on there, I glue it back on. That's how anal I am. I just found one. I had a reel that was missing that emblem. And I found it down inside one of my rod holders on my gunnel on my boat. 
and I spent 15 minutes digging it out and then I brought it in and I glued it back on the reel. Yeah, that's how anal I am. Alright, now it's time to spool them up. And before you ask, yeah, I put 30 pound Hercules black braid because it's cheap. I mean, this isn't very expensive, a thousand meters. I put it from the spool all the way to the top. I don't, I'm not into putting mono down there, you know, duct tape, all that crap. I put it all straight to the top. Yeah, and this is my Daiichi Seiko line winder. You can take line off with this reel handle. You got a spool holder and a reel holder down here, and it clamps onto a desk. I have two videos all about it. Don't forget, look in the video description, and you'll find links to all this good stuff. Next, I'm going to tell you a story about these reels and some really, really big fish. All right, well, here's all four of them right here. And what I ended up doing, as I said before, is I swapped the handles because I don't have a whole bunch of these Calcutta handles. So what I did is I took the brand new ones and put these handles on. And the older model that I have, the older ones, I took the brand new handles, which is this, and put it on there. So I'm just making newer reels go into service and little older reels step into this handle. Because I'm going to stick this, like I said, on a Shakespeare ugly stick, striper rod, medium light action. This is what I use when I got the kids on the boat or we're just pitching a sinker and, you know, sheep's head fishing, just dabbing down with a light rod. I don't believe we're really going to need the big handle, or maybe later I'll order four more handles. What I do is I just go to Shimano's website and I order them. But the reason that I hope you stuck with me to the end, and I alluded to this on my community page when I said, you know, I did a poll, should I do a video about catching giant fish on a bulletproof reel. What I was alluding to was I have a friend who's uh, also the guy that works on my truck. He's a very, very low key individual. I've never seen him ever get riled up about a thing. He's just a very mellow guy. And he did commercial king mackerel fishing. And if you don't know what that is in Northeast Florida, that is Back in the day, I mean, I guess when he was a little younger, him and another guy in two different boats, like 20, 21 foot boats, these weren't huge boats, would end up 45, 50 miles offshore sometimes in January and February doing cigar minnow trolling for schooly king mackerel. You know, they'd get on a school and I've seen them come back. I seen him come back. He'd leave in the dark, he'd come back in the dark. I mean, running in January in the roughest, roughest of seas. I mean, I used to say, I can't believe you're doing this. But they did it, and I seen him come back, and every cooler on his deck had t forked tail sticking out of it. I don't know, he'd have, I don't know how many head of King Mackerel he'd have. 50, 80, 100, I don't know. Between him and another guy in another boat, he'd have the same. I seen these reels on his boat. That exact reel, except they make the, this is the 100 version, which is a thinner one. They make a 200 version that's a little bit wider. And back then, I'm sure he was using just like 20 or 30 pound mono. If you can believe that this reel, fan, it's not a fancy reel. He's caught over 90 pound wahoo, over 60 pound wahoo on this reel with this little handle. And I always used to say to him, and I still say to him, I just said it to him probably a couple months ago. You know, you can get 
bigger handles, not necessarily larger of a handle, but one with a larger knob, you'd buy them for your reels, you know? And he's like, eh, you know, hey, I'm doing fine. Uh, that, this, that handle works, you know. Hey, I caught a 90-pound Wahoo on it, or 92-pound Wahoo. Well, needless to say, A Wahoo is a missile with a fork tail. Anything with a fork tail is an absolute speed demon. And he caught it on these reels. One with a little, little more line capacity because he was using mono with this handle. And I said to him, how the heck did you do that? And he said, well, I didn't necessarily just reel him in, but I had to chase him with the boat. And then he goes into telling me how he's caught 60 plus pounds. All right, Wahoo are a whole nother fish. I've never caught one. I think I've hooked them before, and they will dump the reel like there's no tomorrow, okay? They are some wicked fast fish. The biggest one I ever saw was 100 plus in the back of somebody's pickup truck. I mean, I walked over to the edge of the pickup truck and I didn't even know really what to expect. And I looked and I went, it, was, it would take your breath away, the size of this fish. That is what you can do with one of these. So if you're a cat fisherman and you think you need the 2,000 uh, because, oh, you don't, you're not going to have, or the 200 size because you don't think you're going to have enough line capacity, I'm sure on this reel, one of these reels that I have with the power handle, bull sharks, black tip sharks, we're talking 100 pound plus that run. Giant redfish, tarpon, probably back in the day, I may have even caught some king mackerel on these. Red snapper, grouper, sea bass, bottom fishing. I mean, giant, like seven foot long nurse sharks. They act like a big old kitty cat, man. They just waller around and they use their weight. So we've caught them on these reels. Now the pros and the cons. These don't corrode, they keep on, I mean, they're so durable, they just keep on working. But, what would I like to see? And I have another video about that. I almost wish that Shimano would make these just one more size down. If this is a 100 and they make a 200, I'd love to see a 50. About that big around, really kind of small real small with i don't know if the thing held 250 yards of 30 pound or 20 pound or 15 pound braid make it a 10 pound mono 12 pound mono kind of reel same thing i wish they would just take this stick it in a shrinking machine and make it smaller I have a video where I'm talking about that. What are the downsides? What are the cons of these reels? Well, number one, I like to replace the handle, obviously. Number two, I wish, but this might start getting it into the undurable, is when you flip the handle, I wish it would auto-engage. Yes, there's a pen out there that will auto-engage, but I just don't use pen anything. I've had bad experiences and I swore off them. A lot of people don't like that when you turn the handle, it clicks. I don't mind it. I can keep up with what my folks in my boat are doing. I can hear them, all right? So if it was auto-engaging, that would be fantastic. It's a 4.3 to 1 gear ratio. I wish it was just a straight across the board 5.1 to 1 gear ratio. I wish it was just a tad high, higher speed. Getting, a, getting a, a sinker off the bottom that much quicker. But other than that, these are super durable. And if you're looking to get into something that is a do-all reel, Matching this up with a ugly stick striper, catfish, ugly stick striper, or an ugly stick uh, striper rod, or 
as I have here. I've got a bunch of them matched up with these Tiger Light jigging in, what are they? Six foot three, four to seven ounce category. These are what I catch sharks on. These are what we can catch bull reds on. And these are just absolute do-all. And it's got the jigging style handle, but I will be taking this one with the power handle and sticking it on these tigers. And the ones without the power handle will be going on just a Shakespeare Ugly Stick Medium Light Striper Rod. So there you go. That's the story. If you think you can do better than taking that reel right there, basically that reel, and catching an over 90 pound Wahoo, then go right ahead. Because that is the greatest catch that I have ever heard of. And I trust this guy 100%. I trust him enough that when I drop my truck off, he's fixing it. And he's done it every time for years. He's a great fisherman. He's just a really calm, cool, and collected kind of guy. It would be great if I had him tell the story, but he'd be a little, uh, you know, on camera probably. Because he's not that type of individual. See, they, these are old enough that they call them Triton. See, that was the original name. Triton 100G. I refer to them as the Triton. Now they just shortened it to TR 100G. So either way, these are my four new ones that I'm pressing into service. And don't forget to look below in the video description because I am going to pack it slap full of all kinds of good links to other videos about these reels and stuff like that. Don't forget, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and ring that bell. That's what we always are supposed to be told, to ring that bell if you're a subscriber so you can get notifications of future uploads. So thanks for watching. This is Captain Dave, Captain Dave Sport Fishing, Jacksonville, Florida. I'll see you on the next one.